Greetings everybody, Nikki Brown here, no matter where you are and what part of the world you are in, I hope that you are having a good day. So, we are going to talk about self-care. Um, one of the first things we typically think about when we think of self-care is hygiene, right? Um, and in today's modern society, um, at least from a female perspective, we typically think about hair, nails, makeup, and skin care. Um, of course, you know, bathing, <laughs> taking showers or taking baths. Um, and those are essential parts of proper hygiene, right? You want to look good, you want to smell good, you want your hair to look good. Especially if you're a single woman and you're wanting to attract a certain caliber of God. But with that being said, a lot of women nowadays are wearing their uh, natural hair. And natural means unchemically treated. So no relaxers and no hair color, right? Um, she may be a straight natural where she has her hair blow dried or pressed um, or she may be a natural who wears her hair short and was considered a TWA or a teeny weeny afro, right? Whereas a large majority of men um, have grown up seeing long flowy hair on TV so this has become the standard of beauty, right? Uh, and what they want to see more often than not and so for some men they find women who wear a TWA teeny weeny afro as ugly or unkept um, whereas she may um, actually wash her hair on a regular basis oil it and just let it do what it naturally does um, again, there are some men who would see that as unattractive or unkempt, um, whereas for her, again, she's just allowing her hair to do what it naturally does. She keeps it clean, it's oiled, it's probably soft, um, but we've been, again, trained to call it nappy, um, when really it's just tightly curled. Um, you could call it kinky curly. Uh, tight tight coils um, whatever you, you choose to name it but really um, nappy is, is a derogatory term um, just like the n-word right or just like the b-word and so if we're wanting to do better um, especially if we call ourselves being elevated or conscious or woke and all of these different things or even religious we should not be criticizing or judging someone based on how they just choose to wear their own natural hair the way that it grows out of their scalp right now um, that's not to say that some people um, don't comb their hair because there are some people who they just wake up and it is what it is or they just grab a piece of hair put it in a braid or a twist and and it looks fine to them um, but there's also some guys out there who are the same way and would love a woman who's that way. So there's somebody for everybody. Um, so again, there's the ones who love the long flowy hair. And a lot of times the long flowy hair is a wig or a weave. Not always. There are a lot of women who have very long hair. Um, shoulder length or longer, right? Um, naturally long hair. But there are a whole lot of women who wear wigs or weaves. And a lot of times guys will say, oh, I don't like women with wigs or weaves. But then that's what they look at when they go out. <laughs> because really, um, for most men, it's the overall look that they find appealing. And not necessarily the little details that women most mainly pay attention to. Um, like, typically, you don't find a man and say, oh, I didn't want to date her because her eyebrows weren't done. Like, <laughs> that usually doesn't happen. They're usually just interested in that overall look, whether or not they find this person attractive or appealing, right? Um, in terms of, say, nails, um, I like long nails, right? 
why do I like long nails? My mom has naturally long, well, my mom's nails naturally grow long and they're thick, right? Whereas mine, they grow long, but they're thin, so they break easier. Whereas with my mom, she can grow her nails out and they'll stay long for months. Um, whereas with me, it may be, so let's say hers will stay long for six months and mine will stay long for two months, two, three, you know, and that's, that's the difference. So, um, you know, there are nail salons, black, whether it's black owned or owned by, you know, an Asian business owner. A lot of women go to nail salons and have their nails manicured so that they, you know, they're all the same shape, the same size. Um, you know, whatever color um, they want. Because again, this is something that's attractive and appealing. Um, we like color, you know. Color is appealing. Um, color is also associated with our chakras, right? Which is why I have this mat. Um, this yoga mat, right? And, um, And so every woman is different. Like right now, um, my, all my nails have broken, so I just have polish on them. Um, I polish them myself. I do have nail polish. Um, but again, they're weak. So um, I have been putting nail strengthener on them, but um, even as they grow out, they'll crack. And I have to... Um, Cut them or file them down, um, reapply, you know, reapply more polish. Now, the, the tip for polish for the ladies who are watching, if you just want to put the regular polish on your nails, put a clear coat, um, then put your polish on. And you may have to do at least three or four coats of regular polish. And then another layer of clear polish. So with those five six layers of polish the polish will last longer because typically if you just went in regular polish um, it, as you wash your hands and go about your day um, it'll start to peel off after about two three days and then it's time to take it off and maybe put, apply more polish or go back to the nail salon and have more polish put on hold on a second let me dump let me uh, put this tea bag in the sink <clears throat> I meant to bring something over that I could put it in, but I forgot. So, uh, it is reusable tea bag, so I just put it in the sink for now. I will empty it out when I'm done. This is burdock root and Ceracy tea. I mixed them both together. So, not the best tasting stuff, but um, the body likes bitter. And um, that's another thing. Um, that's my number two is healthy eating. Um, but I'm actually still working on number one, and I'm going to talk about makeup. Um, I think that kind of taking showers and baths kind of goes without saying. Although there are some people who don't shower or take baths on a regular basis, um, some of these people were raised this way, and so they don't see anything wrong with it because this is how they were raised in their household. Um... And sometimes, and a lot of times people will say, oh, well, they should be the first person to smell themselves. Yet, if they've become, uh, their nose has adjusted to this scent, um, it kind of becomes their natural scent and they don't realize that maybe they have an odor um, because they've become desensitized to it. Um, makeup. Um, I am not wearing any makeup right now, but I do have some lipstick on, right? I have some purple, my purple lipstick on. And so sometimes just, you know, um, making sure your face is clean, moisturized, and maybe a lip gloss, uh, or some type of lip moisturizer 
is fine because uh, some women don't wear makeup um, but then some women wear a whole face of makeup and what they call simple what some women call simple and this is not me picking on anybody but what some women call sim simple for me is not simple it's complicated um if i do put makeup on it's like maybe a little foundation and some concealer um and if i have a primer it's the spray one and i'll just you know set it in and then i'm done um, but you know, some women do a lot extra contouring and you know, they're carrying the makeup with them in their purse. They're reapplying it all throughout the day. And again, this is not picking on anybody. Um, but this is to say that everyone is different when it comes to that. And again, that's something that men say they don't like is women with who wear makeup. Some women, some men say it and some men don't. However, again, sometimes they don't even know that the woman is wearing makeup. Again, they just see the overall package and they, be, they either like it or they don't like it. And sometimes they'll complain, oh, why are you wearing that makeup? If they do know that she's wearing makeup, I, you know, which usually sometimes doesn't happen until they've been dating for a while and he actually knows that she's wearing makeup. Because again, a lot of men don't know that women are wearing makeup. Um, it's not always easy to tell if someone's wearing makeup, right? Um, I'm going to turn this light on and see. Right, so I just made it a little brighter. Um, I do have dark circles under my eyes, right? And I do have some bags under my eyes, right? Um, maybe don't get as much, as much sleep as I should. Um, and this is one of the things that happens. Um, drinking more water helps. Um, at least half your body weight in water. Getting some rest, which again, if... Um, depending on your lifestyle, this can be challenging. Like, say for a YouTube content creator, some people are up all night editing. And so they do get, you know, bags or dark circles under their eyes. Um, nutrition has a lot to do with it as well. Um, you know, putting cucumbers under your eyes in tea bags, um, that helps as well. Um, of course, going to like a, a dermatologist. Um, exercising to um, um, fill out the face because that, that helps with that as well. Um, all of these different things will help if you're not the type of person who wants to make wear makeup, but maybe you do have dark circles under your eyes or bags um, or some other face, facial condition that's going on with your skin, right? So again, that brings me to my number two, which is eating healthy. Like I said, one of the things that you can do is drink at least half your body weight in water, even if it's tea, because um, I been making a conscious effort to drink my water um, but then um, it may not it, it may be tea <clears throat> um, in Tiracy tea is a Jamaican tea and it's really good for purifying your blood so is burdock root and it's good for detoxing the body as well so um, and of course water naturally flushes out your body you don't have to buy you know herbs with teas in order to clean your body out um, fasting helps so fasting and drinking water um, that's a great way to flush out your body of some of the toxins that may build up underneath the skin and then the skin underneath your eyes is like the thinnest and most sensitive um, so again just eating healthy and taking care of your skin um, and what I mean by eating healthy is more fresh fruits and vegetables um, you know whatever that means to you for some people it just means just salads and they feel like they don't like to eat salads but it doesn't have to be just salads um there are a lot of options um you can even make like a a, a platter of vegetables with a dip you can drink smoothies um hummus guacamole um 
Um, you can use the the hummus to dip your veg your veg you can dip vegetables in hummus. And guacamole is a vegetable in and of itself because it's avocado, onion, and tomato, right? So you can eat that um, with another vegetable or with you know chips of your choice. It's a way to get vegetables. Um. And of course, you can make different things aside from a salad. Um, there are cold soups, um, raw vegan sushi rolls, raw vegan pizza. Um, there are different options. Whether you're a vegetarian or not, um, there are options um, to eat vegetables aside from just eating a salad is basically my point. You can enjoy raw vegetables in other ways, but the purpose is to incorporate more fruits and vegetables than anything else. I would say that if you have four ounces of protein on your plate, have six to eight ounces of vegetables on your plate, or have a smoothie with a dinner, or for breakfast, um, maybe substitute you know, bacon and eggs two or three times a week for a smoothie, or a, smooth, uh, a fruit bowl, um, have fruit for dessert, eat an apple before you go to bed or other little substitutions that you can make again to incorporate more fresh fruits and vegetables into your diet exercise um, a lot of people like to reference things from the Bible right so I'm going to use this opportunity to do that now in the Bible it does say that the earth gives us everything we need from the trees and from the land right it also says that after dinner you should walk <laughs> so an hour after dinner if I'm not mistaken and I don't remember what scripture it is but after dinner everyone should take at least a 20 to 30 minute walk right you can go outside and walk you can walk on a treadmill and ideally the best time to eat is before 7 o'clock so between say 6 6 30 so if you eat at six, then by seven o'clock, you can go take a walk. If you have a treadmill or some type of equipment in your home, you can do that. If it's too dark and you don't want to go outside that late, you know, that's understandable as well. But then you should do some form of exercise, maybe some calisthenics, some jumping jacks, um, some jump squats. What are they called? Uh, kickbacks, whatever they call them. I forget what they call them. They... What they were called when I was in gym class in elementary school is different than what they're called now. And I can't think of the name right now. Um, squat thrust or something like that. Um, but you understand what I'm saying. Some form of exercise for 20 to 30 minutes. Yoga, Tai Chi, Qigong, something. Right? Um, mental health. <laughs> treating yourself well talking to yourself well right um i've already mentioned walking i think that's another way to treat yourself well right especially if you're upset about something right i know that there have been times if i was upset about something something was on my mind and i went to take a walk in the park i felt so much better afterwards it's i pretty much forgot what was going on and just enjoyed my walk and enjoyed nature, right? I felt like I was one with the most high or one with the universe um, while I was walking. Also practicing your breathing. Not only is this good for your heart, but it is also another way to help you calm down if you're in a situation where you maybe have gotten a little riled up about something. And then you can handle that situation better going forward. Um, having a hobby, right? What do you like to do? Do you like to cook? Do you like to bake? Do you like to make preserves? Do you like to sew? Do you like to knit or crochet? Um, do you like to make whatever? I don't know. Um, make teas. <laughs> um, write. Read. Um... I would play cards, go bowling, skating, um, which of course those things are good for exercise as well. 
uh, I don't know, bowling, skating, learning something new, traveling, going on vacation. Um, and, and when I say traveling, I, it could be a day trip. You could jump in a car and go for maybe an hour, two hour ride. And then you come back home. Um, allow yourself to feel. A lot of times when things happen, many of us were taught to suck it up. Don't cry. Be a big girl. Be a big boy. Boys don't cry. Um, shut up even. <laughs> Um, and so uh, many of us were taught not to feel or not to allow ourselves to feel. But it is okay for you to allow yourself to feel. Um, even if once we've elevated to a higher level spiritually, you're still going to feel things. You don't have to push them to the side. If someone makes you angry, you can acknowledge that you're angry. If someone makes you sad, you can acknowledge that you're sad. Now, you may or may not acknowledge it to that person. If you do acknowledge it to that person, maybe you do some breathing first and then you respond by saying, that didn't make me feel good. Or I didn't like when you said that. Or that hurt my feelings. Now that person may or may not care, right? But it allowed you to set a boundary and let that person know what you will and will not tolerate. You know, I don't like you doing that and I'm not going to accept it. But you don't have to yell or curse them out. <laughs> That's not what you have to do. Um, and even if you don't speak, you um, allow yourself to feel, say maybe you're sad about something, you lost something, you lost someone um, with something else um, maybe going on. And you allow yourself again to feel whatever that feeling is that's going through you at that moment however really only spending maybe 20 or 30 minutes sitting with it and then get out of that that feeling or that emotion whether you write it down um, talk to someone about it but sitting there dwelling on it or complaining about it calling 10 15 people to tell them that same story over and again over and over again that's not treating yourself well That's not a good example of treating yourself well. Um, which brings me to my next point, which is speak your truth. Um, and this is still all about your mental health. Speak your truth. Again, it's okay for you to speak your mind if somebody d dishonors you or does something that you feel is disrespectful. But you don't have to yell or curse. You don't have to give them the silent treatment. And you don't have to be mean to them. Sometimes people do or say things and they don't realize that they've hurt you. So you're walking around giving them a silent treatment and they don't even know what's wrong. So now they're just looking at you like you're crazy. Because who in the world, nobody's, a, nobody, there are mind readers, right? But nine times out of ten, the person that you're directing this aggression to, this passive aggression towards, is not reading your mind. You have to open your mouth and say what's wrong. Again, without an attitude, Right? You hurt my feelings. I didn't like when you said that. I didn't like when you did that. That made me feel some kind of way. X, Y, and Z. But not in the complaining way either. Oh, yeah. No. In a very calm and respectful manner. Even if you felt like they weren't respectful to you. You don't have to meet their, match their tone and temperament. That's one of the things you learn in customer service. You know, you don't match the customer's tone or temper because they're upset does not mean that you should be upset. They're upset about whatever is going on with, you know, the reason why they call customer service, but you're here to provide them with service. Now, am I saying that it's, that can be challenging, right, for some people, um, but it is possible. Even if you, you know, have, have to give yourself a moment to, again, just breathe. And maybe not while the customer's on the phone, because then they'll think you're being condescending or sarcastic. 
they're not taking them seriously or that you don't want to listen to them or that you're getting frustrated with them. Um, but again, we can speak our mind freely without it being, without it coming up in an aggressive uh, way. And the person that you're directing it towards or saying it to, again, may not receive it and they may not care. But you were able to get it out of your vessel <laughs> so that you can move on and leave it alone. Um, communication. Um, for me, this means open and honest communication. A lot of times people lie to themselves and others. So for me, it's open and honest communication is very, very important. Say what you need to say. So once you once you speak your truth again, say it in a way that serves you, that honors you, and treats you well. Because I don't know if you notice when you say something in a calm way, your body is calm. But when you get aggressive and you say it in a mean, yelling, your body feels that. So that's going on inside of you. That's that causes dis-ease within your vessel, not the other person. Because they're probably again may not even care and not paying you no mind. Oh, that person's at it again. They fuss it again. They get on my nerves. I'm being ready to do whatever X, Y, and Z. And they may completely tune you out and not hear a word you are saying. Because a lot of times people can't receive or hear you when you're yelling or being nasty and mean to them. Or they give you that same tone and temperament back and nobody gets anywhere because you're not hearing each other. Meditate. Um, not only, again, is this good for your health, but again, this is a great way to help you calm down and treat yourself well. It helps you stay centered. It helps you with your balance. It helps you with your focus. It helps you with memory. It helps us to not be so scattered and all over the place. To focus our thoughts. Maybe, you know, if you felt like you couldn't write before, maybe you can start writing something. And really focus and concentrate on something that is important to you. Whereas maybe before you were more scatterbrained. And acknowledge your strengths. Again, this is treating yourself well. Everyone has strengths and weaknesses. Don't always just focus on your strengths. I'm not going to come up here every day and say, oh, I got bags under my eyes and dark circles. I'm not going to do that, right? I'm going to focus on my strengths. I'm still pretty. <laughs> I'll put a little lipstick on and I'm good as far as I'm concerned. And my opinion, as far as I'm concerned, is the opinion that matters. <laughs> right because I'm treating myself well and other people may have their opinions and I may take them into consideration however my opinion is the most important right and I think that especially when you're wanting to attract the opposite sex confidence is very very important right confidence is very important as far as I'm concerned, you know, like Kevin Samuels always says, oh, rate yourself and don't say it seven. Well, what are you supposed to say? <laughs> Certainly not a six. And I think that any man or woman, you know, get you a haircut and, you know, smell good and look good. Um, you can make yourself a 10 because that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. It's all a personal perspective because, again, there are some men who don't like short natural hair. They don't like TWAs, teeny weeny afros. They prefer a, a woman with long hair. Whether it's curly or straight, they prefer it to be long. Some women prefer long hair. Some women gravitate towards, in the Bible, that a... a a woman's hair is her glory. And so um, honoring that tradition of not cutting the hair. And all of those things make sense. But not for everybody. <laughs> Some women don't want to take care of long hair. They don't know what to do with it. 
or they feel like they don't want it to look the same all the time. They would like to change it up. They like to put some color in it or do whatever it is they need to do to, in their mind, feel like they're pretty. Some women um, wear their hair really short in, a, in what's considered a boy cut, right? Although this has historically been done throughout time, um, but so has growing your hair long. So again, it's really a matter of personal preference. Some people, again, it's more spiritual, and some for some people, it's not. Some people don't know anything about that. So they just do what feels right to them. But as long as you're confident with it. So if you are that woman with the short hair, there are some women, I give them compliments all the time. There was one woman, um, her hair was bald. I don't know if it was because of some type of condition or not, but I said, I like your hair. She said, you see hair? Um, I said, well, I like your style. How about that? <laughs> and, um, and I did. And, and I don't know if she had some type of condition. For me, she still looked good. And she was dressed well. You know, she had her makeup done. And she had on, you know earrings and a cute outfit and so that she had a whole look going on um she's treating herself well even if she does have some type of condition where she can't grow hair she's still treating herself well and honoring this in within her connections um it's good to have good connections with people and sometimes within those connections, we may need to ask for help, whether it's physical help or, you know, just having someone to talk to um, or um, whatever that help needs to be or whatever that help looks like. It's going to be different for the ind individual, but it's good to have someone or people who are have your back and can be in your corner to help you out when you need something no matter what that something is um you know someone you can communicate with and trust that if you share something with them they're not just going and you know having diarrhea of the mouth and telling as many people as they can tell about what they just told you and we've all been guilty of this um but you want to honor yourself and again set boundaries with people and let them know this is what I prefer in a friendship or a connection in a spouse. Um, if, if we're going to have a, a relationship as relatives, you know, I want someone that I feel like I can trust and really connect with and know that, you know, what I say is going to stay between us. If that's what you're into, you may not be, you may not mind. Oh, yeah, I know you, you know, so some people feel like that's how it's supposed to go. And that's fine, too. Um, but again, having someone you can ask for help or that's even, you don't even have to ask. They see that you need something and they just automatically do it. Because um, that happens, too. Right? Um, but again, just honoring yourself. And whatever you want in a connection, whether it be romantic or platonic, male or female. So, um, those are basically all of my self-care tips. Um, and, and with acknowledging your strengths, also reciting some affirmations. You know, in addition to meditation, I am. Whatever you say I, after I am, you are. It becomes true. So what are you saying after I am? Sometimes I, I, I say this to people and it goes completely over their head. And they may say the, the B word and not the B-I word, the B-R word, right? And I'll say, you shouldn't say that. You should just say, I don't have it right now or something along the line. Yeah, well, I ain't got it. Uh, well, yeah, well, I am. That's not honoring yourself. And again, whatever you say out after I am will continue to exist because you're making it true because you're saying it and you're feeding it to your subconscious mind. So your subconscious mind thinks that you're okay with it. 
and they keep manifesting things in your life that will allow that those words to be true for you. And, and that's the law of the universe. That's one of the laws of the universe. And I think people think I can do or say whatever I want as long as I ask for forgiveness or repent or confess, you know. That's not how it works, though. <laughs> there are universal laws. What a man reapeth, so shall he sow. So sometimes people say things or do things and then wonder why they have consequences. Because a lot of the time, so let's say, for example, someone says something really mean to you and you're a really sweet person or even an earth angel, right? But they don't know that. And they say something really mean to you. And they end up getting into a car accident or getting fired from their job. They're blaming it on something completely different when it's the fact that you dishonored somebody who didn't do anything to you. So sure, you can ask for forgiveness, repentance, confess to the Catholic priest, whatever you do. But you still going to get that, them hands. You still going to get them karmic hands. <laughs> Whether it's the same day, the next day, a week later, weeks later, months later, or even years later. Because depending how hard, on how hard you've gone and how long you've been doing it and how many warnings you've gotten to stop and you still keep doing it, sometimes the most high will let you go all the way up. Oh, I'm going to let this person think they're getting away with it. And then... Take everything away. With one devastating blow. Now sometimes things are taken away from people and it's for them to rest. Or it's because they're in a situation that they shouldn't have been in. That was not serving a good purpose in their life. And they didn't want to listen to the warning signs and move away from it. So it is taken away from them in that instance as well. But I'm talking about the karmic situations. And so again, what are you saying to yourself? And what are you saying to other people? Because you shouldn't be saying anything to other people that you wouldn't say to yourself. And you shouldn't be saying things to yourself that you wouldn't say to other people. Because a lot of times we treat other people better than we do ourselves. You know, we give other people grace. We give other people compliments person might have the same haircut and you'll sit there and criticize yourself for that haircut whereas the person who has a haircut like yours you'll give them compliments what are you saying after i am whatever i am you are <laughs> whatever you say is true so if you say something good it's true if you say something not so good that's gonna be true too I hope that you can start to love yourself and care for yourself more. And I hope that these tips were helpful. And until next time, later, I love y'all.